So I thought I'd come to you today in this video, kind of on the, as a follow-up to the video I did recently. I'm not sure if you saw that or not, um, but essentially about anxiety. And it, it can apply, you know, the strategies here that I'm sharing last AM today can be applied to anything related. So stress, stress type responses, stress, anxiety, uh, worry, doubt, fear, um, psychological fear that is, um, you know, panic attacks, things like this. A lot of these uh, emotions are reactive in nature, reactive emotions. And they're reactive in that they're, the way they kind of work is largely unconscious. People will experience, you know, massive stress or anxiety, let's say, and feel like it takes them over. I'll ask people, you know, if you watched my last video, I talked about feeling it, feeling the emotion in the body. And I'll ask people, well, where do you feel that anxiety? Where do you feel that stress? And at first their answer is, I don't know. I just feel stressed. I just feel anxious. Or maybe, maybe they'll notice that they feel it in their head. And that's, that's good. That's a starting point. In my experience, these reactive emotions, well, when we first take them over, you know, if we're lucky, we feel, feel them in our, in, our, in our head, like I say, or we won't even know where they are. And so it becomes really difficult when they take us over, it, basically we move into the flight, fight, or freeze response. And so really, you can look at it, at it as the areas of our brain that we need, you know, for creativity, for compassion, for innovation. We don't have the same access to those parts of us when we're in the fight, flight, or freeze response. So in other words, we tend to do and say and think the same way that we always have, and we end up getting the same result. Now, at first, at first it's good to learn how to manage these emotions, certainly. But as we go, we wanna go underneath and find out what's at the core. The, the, the narrative, which includes uh, kind of core beliefs, uh, the deeper emotions, um, the, the unmet needs underneath that, those, those sorts of areas. When we do, then the reactive part falls away. The reactive emotion or the reactive behavior too. So behaviors might be things like procrastination, indecision, um, right down to addiction. Some of these are very, very serious, like I mentioned, I think, last time. And require immediate, immediate intervention. But mechanically, I found them to really be related to what I said earlier in that they're kind of there as a coping mechanism in a, in a, in a way against something deeper that we don't want to feel. Beliefs, emotions, and whatever this need is. And so I find, the reason I'm sharing this is I find is for a lot of people, myself included, it was very, very, it can be very, very difficult to learn how to feel what's going on in the body. When we do, it breaks that reactive part. We can feel anxiety, my experience, we can feel, and working with clients, we can feel anxiety, we can feel stress, we can feel even anger, although that, that tends to be a reactive emotion, it tends to go away, um, in my experience again. So we can feel all these in our body. We can physically, viscerally feel the physical sensation of it. And I found that there might be, you know, symptoms in the extremities, in the arms, legs, neck, like for instance, stress will produce a lot of tension in the neck, for instance, grinding of the teeth, you know. Um, but I find that the emotion itself, it seems to be the source of it seems to be on our body. But I've had a couple of people say to me recently that it's just, they find it so difficult to get into their body. And that's why I wanted to make this video today. Um, to help, I mentioned breathing last time. I wanted to share a very specific breathing pattern with you that you can try. You can try it and let me know how you do with it. You know, certainly you can, um, you can get a hold of me through any social media platform, whatever contact information you can have there. You can direct message me. Um, but I found it to be, for myself and for a lot of people, I found it to be a very, very um, empowering and calming breathing method that helps us not only manage the emotion, but start to move into our body so we can process the deeper parts. So I call it heart breathing. Uh, another term for it is resonant breathing. 
And you can try it right now as I'm talking, I'll take you through this. I find for myself personally, I find it very uh, helpful to put one hand or sometimes both over my heart as I do this. And you can close your eyes. Again, I find that very, very help for, for, helpful for exercises like this. So you close your eyes and you start to breathe deeply and slowly. And as you do that, imagine that the breath is going to your heart and from your heart. So it's actually your heart breathing, not so much your lungs. And so just start there for a moment, imagining that breath going to and from the heart. Your mind may wander somewhere else, just gently bring it back to that breathing. Allowing your breath to be very deep, very slow. And now what you can do, as you breathe, extend the inhale and the exhale to a count of six each. So counting to six on the inhale and then counting to six on the exhale. Again, to and from the heart, very important piece of this. And now as you're, as you're doing that, again, counting to six, breathing to and from the heart. See if you can't eliminate the pause between the inhale and the exhale. The idea here is to make this one continuous looping breath. So the inhale followed by the exhale, followed by the inhale. Again, to a count of six and to and from your heart. So continue breathing in that matter if you're trying it now. It's good to stay with us for a few minutes. Just seeing the breath going to and from the heart, the count of six, and that continuation between the in inhale and the exhale. When we're in that state of stress, from what I understand, it's like there's an um, electrical disconnect between the, the brain and the heart. And that's part of the fight, flight, or freeze response. And by doing this breathing, we reconnect the heart and the brain. This is actually something I think I originally learned. I might have altered it, but I originally learned from Tony Robbins when I did some training under him. There's many forms of breathing. I've been privileged to be part of different styles of breath work, different breathing patterns for dealing with this. But when we breathe this way, we reconnect the brain and the heart. And so we become more capable again. We can access that creativity. We can access that compassion. We can access that innovation, whatever we need. And we, and we get to feel better. So you can continue for as long as you like, Breathing that way, camera was crooked. Breathing that, that way, and yeah, I'd recommend three, four, five minutes at a time. You can do it anytime during the day. I found it really helpful when you start to notice that stress building. Just take a minute and do that. So with that, you guys, uh, I encourage you to practice. And you know, if you'd like some more help with that, with learning how to manage and then ultimately heal the stress and the anxiety, whatever it is, burnout, whatever, whatever overwhelm, let me know. I'd be happy to help. So with wishing you a wonderful rest of your Wednesday, I hope to see you soon. Bye.